Okay, so welcome back to another video. So today's integral is um, involves with the gamma function. So we have to get the integral from zero to two pi of one divided by gamma of one minus e to the power i times x dx. So since we have an exponential, you know, Euler's formula e to the i x, then that means that we're getting in a little bit into ourselves in the world of complex analysis. But how will we evaluate something like this because we have a gamma function? So one might think that it's probably possible that if we can actually just use the integral representation of gamma, so it, hopefully we could like proceed forward from somewhere. But I promise there's actually a little, a little easier trick. So what we can do is, and this is pretty much the premise of this video, is convert this integral that we have and convert this into a contour integral. So I've actually done a couple of, you know, um, contour integrals back in the past where it actually first starts off just like as a look like as a, uh, you know, innocent looking definite integral, but, you know, convert that to contour integrals and using that idea from there. So even if we have contour integrals from here, that would also mean that we can actually apply the residue theorem. So um, residue theorem is basically we have, um, so de de depending on what your denominator is, if you have um, some value that's, um, that creates a pole and it's within some sort of like the path of the contour, then you can actually evaluate that residue there in order to, you know, to evaluate the integral itself. So, you know, using from that, that's what basically what we're going to do from here. It's actually a little um, simpler than you'd think when looking at it at a first glance. So there's no reason, really no need to overthink this. So you'll see why. So anyway, let's actually just jump in. So I'll call this um, given integral I. So let me see, I'll just rewrite the same thing again. 0, 2 pi of 1 divided by gamma of 1 minus e to the i times x dx. Now, suppose we can actually do a little substitution. So I'll call this, we'll say z. z is equal to e to the power i x, Euler's formula. Then if we differentiate both sides, so dz is equal to, um, so i then times e to the power i times x dx. But let's make things a little simpler and get um, dx by itself. So why don't we actually just substitute z back for e to the power i x and then divide i times z to both sides. So therefore I'd have dz divided by i times z is equal to dx. Now we notice that I'll put in a note and say that um, our, our you know, exponential function Euler's formula, e to the power i x, um, this is from our closed interval from 0 to 2 pi. This actually describes the path along that unit circle. Again, this is like Euler's, this is Euler's formula describing the, um, the circle of the shape. So it's a, a path along the unit circle from the positive real axis. Um, let me see, I'll put unit circle uh, on, the po on positive real axis. Okay, so now we would see that our new integral would have to be that i is now, so we just substitute, um, so our contour integral like so, so going in a you know pos positively oriented um, orientation, and it's along the unit circle, so it'd be our um, z is supposed to equal one of our um, substitution, so one divided by gamma of one subtract z, then multiply with our um, substitution dz divided by i times z. If I just substitute, well not really substitute, but if I just you know simplify it a little better. So really what I can do is I can actually factor out the i from outside of our integral. So we would have one over i, then our contour integral from our unit circle z is equal to one of one divided by z times gamma of one subtract z dz. So now to notice that um, if we're looking from our, you know, function, the only pole exists that we need to calculate the residue is z is equal to zero. Since um, for gamma, for gamma one minus z to be a pole, of course that has to equal zero, but that's actually not possible. So that's actually out of our exclusion. So that means we could say that the only pole is um, z is equal to zero. And so what that means is that if we apply the residue theorem, so residue theorem, we know that I is just equal to, so residue theorem means you're calculating the sum of all the poles that are inside our unit circle. But since only Z equals zero is um, only involved in this situation, so that's the only thing we need to calculate. There's only one pole that we need to you know, evaluate and Z is equal to zero. So that means we have two, the following formula we say is um, two pi I, then just divided by I, 
then add up the sums of your residues, which is only just one. So it's just multiply with the residue evaluated at one divided by uh, Z times gamma one minus Z, and then at uh, Z is equal to zero. And now if we do this, so all the I's would cancel. So we have two pi, then that means calculating the residue means you're taking the limit then of your function that the pole is at, z is equal to zero. Multiply that with your f of z function for this case. So that way the z's will cancel from both the top and bottom. The limit z approaches zero of z, then times one divided by z um, times gamma of one minus z, okay? Then see that this is just equal to um, two pi, then times the limit as z approaches zero, of one divided by gamma of one minus z. And so now it's actually just simple to see that you plug z for here. So gamma of one minus zero is gamma of one, but that's actually well known that gamma of one is actually just going to equal one. You can simply just calculate using the integral representation or however you want to use in forms of gamma. That's uh, very easy to evaluate. So we have, um, let's see, so two pi then times one divided by gamma of one, which is just equal to just two pi. And so there we have it, our final answer for our little um, integral that was given to us, just like that. So yeah, residue theorems really have, um, you know, it's um, residue theorem itself is actually a really interesting topic to learn when you're dealing with, you know, complicated integrals that you think it's not possible to evaluate for like elementary, elementary functions. So in one sense or another, this is kind of like the way of this is the only resort to get to there. Well, I wouldn't really say only resort because I'm pretty sure the way to say this more like there, there are possible, there are many other ways to evaluate it, but it's, it's not as simply done than you think it would have been. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.